The first round of Brazil's elections made it clear that Bolsonarism will remain a strong political force even after Jair Bolsonaro's defeat in the presidential election. 8 out of 14 state governors elected in the first round are Bolsonaro allies, and many of the most voted members of both houses of Congress were pro-Bolsonaro, similar to what happened in 2018. But this thriving Brazilian far right is a relatively new phenomenon. Since the country's return to democracy in the mid-1980s, presidential elections in Brazil have mostly been disputed between the moderate left and the moderate right. But traditional conservatives have become irrelevant in recent years, leaving plenty of territory for the radical far right to exploit. But how did that happen, and how did Bolsonaro manage to convert the moderate right so seamlessly? Follow along to find out. Since the beginning of the Sixth Brazilian Republic, known as the Nova Repubblica, the country has been ruled by moderate government. Fernando Collor, elected on a bold neoliberal programme with moderate right values, he was followed by two terms of Fernando Henrique Cardoso, a sociologist whose government was marked by currency stability, privatisations and welfare policies. Then came the centre-left Lola, who ran the country for two terms before electing his successor, Dilma Rousseff. But as the global financial crisis arrived late in Brazil, economic woes and corruption scandals driven by Operation Car Wash created animosity around the country. Non-partisan protests against public transport fares in 2013 quickly turned into mass demonstrations with the population expressing its widespread dissatisfaction of the situation of Brazil. And these protests quickly turned to the right. Liberal right-wing movements Movimento Brasil Livre and Vim Pra Rua gained momentum and started to mobilise crowds for a different goal, to impeach Dilma Rousseff and to imprison Lula, wiping the mainstream left off the political map. The protests made extensive use of national symbols such as the Brazilian flag and the national football team shirt. What was initially a movement against the political establishment became a protest solely against the Brazilian left. In this landscape, the anti-left and anti-politic sentiment was captured by former army captain and outspoken far-right politician Jair Bolsonaro. His charisma, outsider status and apparent hatred of the left seduced Brazilians who were fed up with the Workers' Party government, which protests had painted as corrupt. He won the 2018 presidential election, but perhaps his most important achievements came lower down in the ballot. His allies were elected in 15 of Brazil's 27 states, and he managed to turn the tiny PSL party into a massive right-wing congressional force. Meanwhile, many of those votes came at the expense of the centre-right, with the mainstream PSDB and MDB parties suffering huge defeats in Congress. And in this year's election, the collapse of the moderate right has become even clearer. As Lola emerged as the favourite to challenge Bolsonaro at the polls, the centre-right sought to present itself as a third-way option, banking that the population would much rather vote for neither Lola nor Bolsonaro. This calculation was a bad one, third-way attempts fell flat on their face, and the moderate right split between backing Lola and backing the incumbent president. The PSDB, for instance, didn't even have its own presidential candidate, and lost the government of Sao Paulo, a state it had held for decades. Geraldo Alckmin, who ran for the presidency representing PSDB in the past, is standing as Lula's running mate. And former President Fernando Henrique Cardoso, arguably the godfather of the moderate right, is also backing Lula. Whether this rearrangement of political forces persists after this year's election still remains to be seen. But one thing is for sure, even after losing to Lula, Jair Bolsonaro will remain Brazil's biggest right-wing figure for years to come, leaving the moderates behind.